This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Welcome to this third Sunday in Advent. I am Pastor Carey, and this is St. Andrew Lutheran Church here in Phoenix, Arizona. It is so good to welcome each and every one of you to worship this day. A couple of announcements for our community. On December 20th, which is next Sunday, from 3 to 5, we are having um, a drive through open house Christmas celebration. You will stay in your car, and there will be four stations that you will be able to um, go to safely in your car. Two of the stations will be crafts. You'll be able to park in our parking lot and create the crafts if you would like, all the while listening to um, some beautiful Christmas carols and just enjoying kind of the festive of this Christmas celebration. And then the last two stations, the third station will be um, a photo booth where you'll be able to stay in your car and take a picture um, as you are in your car. You'll also have the opportunity um, to bring some non-perishable food items for a local food pantry. And we will build the biggest uh, Christmas tree out of our non-perishable food items that we collect um, next Sunday. And then want to invite you all to our Christmas Eve services we um, will have a Christmas Eve service um, online that will be available. And then we will also gather outdoors um, for an outdoor service on Christmas Eve, December 4th at 4 o'clock and at 6 o'clock. As we continue this Advent journey, may God's hope and love surround you as we continue to this journey of Advent. And now it is time to worship. Come. Let us worship. We join together in the lighting of our Advent wreath. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. A word about everlasting hope. God calls all people to rest in God's everlasting hope so that we may be a hope-filled people with hearts full of God's gracious love for all eternity. As we live with everlasting hope, the night is past and the dawn of your coming is near. Let us pray. Come, O come to us, gracious God, as we believe in everlasting hope. Amen. Thank you. 
may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we may have light. He came down that we may have light. He came down that we may have light. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. Hallelujah forevermore. We join together in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. Beloved of God, people of God, you are forgiven. God loves you. God gives us new beginnings and new life. As we hear these words, your sins are forgiven. Put aside your old ways and become new. God gives us garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Sing, dance, rejoice. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Let us share that peace of God with one another. Amen. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Today when we're taping this service for this weekend, I have to say I was so excited. It was raining out. How many of you got excited to hear the rain and to smell the rain? It was awesome. I hope you got outside and, jump, and jumped in a puddle and just enjoyed the rain this day. Here we are, we are on the third weekend of Advent, the season that we continue to prepare, we continue to wait, we can still continue to expect as we wait for God to tear open the heavens and send his son to come and dwell and be with us. God's son, Jesus, who is with us, who has been with us and who will come with us. Today, I want to play a little, it's not so much of a game, but how many of you guys have ever seen these little bracelet things where you, I'll do this one, where you kind of, it's a light where you kind of break it like this, and then it, you can see like it's kind of coming, it's coming different color and the light is coming. These are so much fun, especially when it's really dark. They, they light up a, uh, the room. So you can see I have kind of four of them kind of lit. They're co pretty cool. I've been thinking about lights. How many of you have, have lights up around your house? Maybe you have lights on your Christmas tree? Those lights are kind of magical, right? They kind of just draw us in, just like the lights of the candles or the lights of our Advent wreath. They draw us in. 
In our gospel that you'll hear in a little bit, we hear about John, John the Baptist, or who I like to say today is John the Pointer, because John points. He points to the light, to the one who is to come. He is pointing to Jesus. You know, that's what light does, right? We kind of follow the light, especially if it's dark. We just look for those little smidgens of light, and we follow that. Well, I think about this light that John is testifying, and the light of God's love that is in each and every one of you, that is burning so bright and is so colorful, this light of God's love. And as you think about this light of God's love on this third Sunday in Advent that is with you, today, tomorrow, and forever, I want to share this blessing with you as you think about Christ's light that is in your life. So I'll say it, and then um, I'll repeat it again, and you can repeat it so you know this blessing too. May the light of Christ be with you today and always. May the light of Christ be with you today and always. And to that we say, amen, that God's light and love is with you always. So we'll make the sign of the cross in the air and say our blessing. May the light of Christ be with you today and always. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Here ends the reading. The Gospel According to John There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. 
I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, in this season of keeping awake, in this season of preparation, in this season of hope, in this season that we cry, come, O come, Emmanuel, in this season where we point, we point to an everlasting hope, to a forever hope. Be with us this day. And now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be holy and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A blessed third Sunday in Advent weekend to each and every one of you. Today, the third candle is lit in our Advent wreath. And as that third candle was lit, we heard a word about everlasting hope. Or I like to say, forever hope. Forever hope. It is a hope that stays with us today and tomorrow and goes with us into the future and beyond. This forever hope points us. It points us to something and it moves us. This forever hope claims our todays, our tomorrow, our future and beyond. Forever hope it does point us. It moves us forward. And this forever hope, this forever hope, and thanks be to God, it is secured in a promise of God's care and God's love. Forever hope. The question that I've been wrestling with as I think about forever hope, and as I think about our gospel for this third Sunday in Advent, is this question, what do I point to? How do I point? And if I am a pointer, what am I pointing to? And do I point to this forever hope that we are given? As I sit with those questions and wonderments about forever hope and wonderments about pointing. I remember when my oldest nephew was maybe three or four years old, and he would be busy doing something. Then all of a sudden, everything would stop. And you hear him yell, Auntie Carrie, Auntie Carrie. And then I would have to stop what I was doing, and I would look. I would look over to him, and I would see him just pointing, pointing at something, pointing at something that maybe he had created pointing at something that he saw, pointing at maybe where a noise came. There was something, as he stood there, pointing, that he wanted me to see and to share in. It was so important for my nephew at that age to, for me to share and for him to have someone to share in that joy and excitement. And... He wanted to share that with anyone that was around. And it was always a gift. I still think back. It was always a gift to be able to share in that joy and in that excitement that he found, that he pointed out. When I remember my nephew being so excited to share with me from what he was doing, seeing, and, and he just could not help himself. He could not help himself but point. His point, his pointing was his way of sharing. When I think about pointing, I also think of my nephew, but I also think about this phrase. It's not polite, polite to point. Have you ever heard of that? And maybe you've used it, that phrase. It's not polite to point. We know that there are times that as soon as we point, 
we almost want to stop ourselves because we know that we're pointing at something or someone and it's not the best action. Sometimes pointing does not help us live in community or relationship with others. Pointing does not always bring joy like it is, did for my nephew. So on this third Sunday in Advent, as we gather together, I ask this question again. What do you point to? What do we point to? Do we point to excitement and joy like my nephew? Or do we point because we are uncomfortable and really we don't know what else to do? One of my favorite things to do this time of year is to get into my car and go around and look at the beautiful Christmas lights around town. I love seeing the beauty, whether that be white lights or colored lights. I love to be able to go see those Christmas lights. As the nights get longer and the days get shorter, it is a gift to see those lights and to see them pierce the darkness. And as I walk around, as I drive around, I often find myself giving thanks about those lights and what they are pointing to and who they are pointing to and the hope that they are pointing to and the promise that they are pointing to. The light that we see in those Christmas lights, the light that pierces the darkness as we see those lights, they bring hope. They remind us that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. I think about all of that today as we enter into our gospel from the Gospel of John, and we hear these words. There was a man sent by God whose name was John, who came not to be the light, but to testify to the light. On this day, on this third weekend Sunday of Advent, we meet up with John the Baptist. We meet up with the adult John the Baptist this day. John the Baptist, one of my favorite people of the Bible. John, the one who comes crying out of the wilderness, eating locusts and honey and wearing camel hair and in a voice that we so clearly hear, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Make the way, the path straight. In the Gospel of John that we read this day, John the Baptist, and maybe a better name for him in the Gospel of John is John the Pointer or John the Witness. Because my friends, that is what this adult John is doing. John the pointer, John the witness, that he was pointing, he was testifying, and he was saying so clearly who he was and who he was not. He says, I'm not the Messiah. I am the voice crying out in the wilderness, make way, the path straight for the Lord. Among you stands the one that you do not know, the one coming after me, the one that I'm not worthy to untie his sandals. John is so clear of who he is. He's so clear of his purpose. John came to be a witness. He came to be a pointer. John came to testify to that light to the one who is coming. As I think about John and I think about his witness and I think about his pointing, I come with all kinds of questions on this third Sunday in Advent. I continue to wonder, who do I point to? Who do I testify to? Who do we as a congregation point to? Who do we testify to? You know, in these last several months, we have been doing all things very differently. We have been pointing 
in a very different way than maybe we even thought that we could be doing. We've been pointing as we've put our services online and people have come and they have watched them. As we've moved and have outdoor services in our parking lot, we have been pointing. People have been hearing this message of the one who brings this forever hope, this everlasting hope as they walk by on Sunday mornings or the roofers that have been working on Choya. They have heard us. And I know I have been told that there have been times when they have stopped and they have been a part of our worship service. We are pointing as a congregation to this forever hope, this forever hope that we wait for, that has come and that will come. We have been pointing as we have brought, we've wrapped towels and brought to Lutheran Social Services of the Southwest this past week. Again, we have been pointing to this forever hope. Now, in this pointing, I also know that sometimes it is difficult to be that pointer, especially when we see kind of all all of the kind of the bleakness that is out there, which is why I love to go drive and see those Christmas lights. But even as we see that bleakness, we have this promise. As the candles and the light continue to draw us in, as I've said these last couple Sundays, continues to draw us in, this forever hope continues to draw us in continues to say, I am coming, I have come, I am here, and I will come. The one who John testifies to this light that comes. So maybe on this third Sunday in Advent, we ask the question, who do we witness to? Who do we point to? Do we rest in the promise of this forever hope that continues to move us forward and continues to call us to continue to point and continue to look to see where this light continues to come, continues to come and pierce the darkness? Amen. Prepare the royal highway, the King of Kings is near. Let every hill and valley a level road appear. Then with the King of Glory, foretold in sacred story, Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. God's people see him coming, the Lord eternal King. Palm branches strew before him, spread garments, shout and sing. God's promise will not fail you, no more shall doubt assail you, Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Then fling the gates wide open to greet your promised King. Your King, yet every nation its tribute to may bring. All lands will bow before.
before him the voices join your singing goes on to the Lord for it fulfills God's word is is no word is truth and love. So let your praise be sounding for kindness so abounding. Hosanna to the Lord for it fulfills God's word. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Here are prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your words in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Beautiful Savior, come and abide with us during the month of December. Bring your hope to our holiday preparations in this challenging season and your grace and love to the many who have little to celebrate this year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of all people and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick. 
or struggling with depression and gather all people in your healing embrace. We pray for your presence to be with those that we name in our hearts this day and those in our prayer chain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Rock of Ages, we wait for you. We stand on you. Receive now our private prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Rejoicing in hope, we lift our prayers to you, most gracious Lord, trusting that you have received them in your care. Amen. We join together in the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>